Welcome back, Bears, to our first broadcast of 2021. We are so excited to accomplish and achieve amazing things in this new year. That's right, and let's hope this one's better than the last, or else we're in for the long run. Can't disagree with that. Hopefully this year won't be a 2020 2.0. All right, now, with further ado, let's move on to our first segment of the year. This segment will be McKee at the Movies from Zoe Woodward and Riley Williams. Hi, and welcome back to McKee at the Movies. I I am alone today, but last time I checked, I'm still Riley Williams. Our last review was about the movie Over the Moon, which is a which is about a girl named Fei Fei who thinks her father has lost faith in the moon goddess Chang Yi. So Fei Fei goes to the moon to find the moon goddess and restore her father's beliefs. But today I am reviewing the movie Soul. Soul is a great movie about a man named Joe Gardner, played by Jamie Foxx, who is really into piano and just became an official band teacher. But then Joe gets picked out for a jazz band with someone who sounds to me like a big deal, but before he even gets home, he kind of sort of dies. Don't worry about it, though. The rest of the movie is basically about him trying to get back to his body and make it to the band in time so he can play for the crowd. Now, I'm not saying anything else because I don't want to spoil anything. Okay, now back to the movie. I really like the story and animation of the movie. I also like how the makers show emotion and passion. It's a very nice movie about, well, life. The only thing I don't like about the movie is the attitude of some of the characters. But I guess that's just life. But now, time for the rating. One, two... I just realized I only have two thumbs, so... I give the movie two thumbs up! And don't forget to send your age-appropriate movies to nmultby at egusd.net. I am Riley Williams, and this has been McKee at the Movies. Ooh, I am so excited to watch this movie. It sounds so amazing. Um, anyways, moving on, in our next segment, Anthony Martinez will be doing book talk. That's right. I can't wait to hear about some new books that would be fun to read. Welcome back to another video of Book Talk. I'm your host, Anthony Martinez, and today we have Bella Platt sharing her book, Tunnel of Bones, by Victoria Schwab. Hi, my name is Bella, and I read a book called Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. The book is about a girl, Cassidy Blake, who goes to Paris with her best friend, Jacob but Jacob is a ghost. And her parents are filming a show of haunted cities. They go to the catacombs in Paris and Cassidy finds that there is a strong spirit and it's not a good spirit. If you want to find out what happens next in Tunnel of Bones, go read it today. Wow. I can't wait until I read that book. That sounds very interesting. Next up, we have Avant Stirring sharing his book, T-Rex and the Other Predators of the Mesozoic by Jacqueline A. Ball. Hi everyone, this is this is Avon. I'm going to be telling you guys about a book called T-Rex and Other Prehistoric Predators of the Mesozoic. It's about many carnivorous dinosaurs like Allosaurus and T-Rex. And trust me, it's not just about T-Rex. I probably wouldn't be doing this if it was. But instead, it's about a whole bunch of them, but it still has a lot of it about T-Rex. And one dinosaur that you see in it is Allosaurus, and 
some things about it is how it hunted was it hunted by ramming its head into smaller dinosaurs like Camptosaurus and Dryosaurus, while with bigger creatures like the Partosaurus, the Plarchus, and Brachiosaurus, it'd have to walk together. And it didn't just get easy meals. And sometimes it had to hunt creatures like Stegosaurus, which had on um, which had thalcomizers on their tail, which made it so that you can't just go from behind. And it had plates on its back to make sure that so to make to cover its back. And if you want to know, use its bigger cousin, Giganosaurus. It was bigger than T Rex, and you could probably not guess how it hunted and how fast it was when it hunted. And you definitely won't be guessing what it hunted. So that's all. You should probably get the book today and make sure that you read everything you can and learn some cool facts. I'm going to put that on my book list. I don't know about you, but I'm going to because I really want to read that book. Well, I'm Anthony Martinez. This is Book Talk. Back to you. Those sound like great books. I agree. I'm so excited to read all of them. They sound like a great adventure. That's right. Now, moving on in this week's broadcast, all the media group members were asked to invite one of their friends or family to be on camera and tell us what they would like to accomplish this year. Here is Abigail DePello with the story. We have finally gotten out of 2020 and are excited to begin the new year. As 2021 begins, we asked our friends and family what their hopes are for the new year. Here are their responses. My hopes and goals for 2021 are, well, I really want us to be happy and healthy, and I want us to kind of travel more and go places again, because 2020 was really hard because of COVID, and we couldn't go many places, and I really want to be able to go places and do more in 2021 with my friends and family. My hopes for the new year is that everybody stay safe and hopefully everything can start getting back to normal as soon as we can. But probably the biggest thing is that everybody stay safe, stay calm, and do what we need to do to get back on the right track. My hopes for 2021 are to hang out with my friends because I haven't seen them in a while due to quarantine. Hi, I hope the year 2021 will bring peace, normalcy, and let us all get back to having fun and hanging out with our families. For Bear Noons Network, I am Abigail Pello. Back to you. All of those are great and positive goals. They sure are. Speaking of positive, our next segment will be positive. Our therapist at McKee will be suggesting ways to stay positive. Here is Jane Nadra and Kara Hughes with April Love. Hey Bears, welcome back to Be Positive, where we focus on being positive and kind. This week, we have a McKee staff member, Miss Love, here to talk about what it means to be po- positive and mindful. Hi, I'm Miss Love, the mental health therapist at James McKee Elementary, and excited to participate in this interview. Thank you for taking time out of your day to talk to us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, ladies. So we've created a new segment for the broadcast that's all about being positive. Why do you think it's generally so important for people to have a positive mindset? A positive mindset is important because it helps you to be able to get through any challenging times. It also helps you, um, even with improving your immune system, the more positive that you are, Um, It also helps to raise your energy to help feel better. And like they say, it's also contagious. So when you're positive and you have a positive mindset and you are around other people or communicating to other people, um, they also will feel better and feel that energy as well. Students are constantly being told to stay positive right now. Why is it so important for students and teachers to be positive during such an uncertain time? So during a time like this, there's a lot of feelings that can come up for all of us, like um, uncertain, like you use that word, um, fear, anxiety, stress. And so being positive can help you with working through those thoughts and feelings that are overwhelming. How can being mindful and spreading positivity have an effect on others? 
As I was sharing uh, with the original question, um, it is modeling for others. So modeling for others, meaning uh, as you're watching other people be positive, think positive and um, choose positive words and focusing on that. And then you are able to witness and see how they are feeling better and managing challenging times in their life. Um, it is something that is modeled for you and that you can see it's working for them. And it is something that can work for you. What should a student do if they know a friend that is stressed, overwhelmed, or they're just worried about them? That's a great question. And we all have to look out for each other right now um, as adults with, you know, I'm a parent and I am an employee. So we want to focus on and pay attention to uh, the people that are around us, whether friends, family members, colleagues. And we definitely do want to talk to them and allow them to know that we're there to support them. Um, what should a student do when they are feeling stressed or overwhelmed? Uh, I brought just a simple, quick, it's called a coping skills strategy. It's a survival guide. And this particular form is something that I've used uh, many times with students that I work with. Um, and also, you know, adults can use it too. So you would write in this particular location that says who supports you. Who are those people? It would be the person that when you talk with them, they make you feel better. Um, and you would write that in here. And then the other part, it says, what makes me smile and laugh? So what are the things? I like watching funny videos. I love stand-up comedy. So I know that if I'm having a really down day, if I put on a, you know, a stand-up comedy at the end of the day, I really start to feel better. A couple other things on this strategy guide um, are you would write in, you know, your best positive affirmation. And also, um, it's great to put those pos uh, positive affirmations if there are ones that you really connect to, uh, write it on the mirror in your bathroom or print it out and put it on the wall, write it on a journal, um, put it on your laptop, on a sticky note, um, wherever you can see that positive affirmation on a daily basis and you start reading it regularly, then it does start to have a positive impact on you. And it does help you to remember, you know, I can get through this. Um, a couple other on this strategy guide is, you know, what can I make, create, play, or build? So I love to color, you know, the art therapy books. Um, I have a family who loves sweets and so I bake a lot with them. And so those are also great coping skills. And so the way this guide works is what you would do is you would fill this whole guide out and then you would pick your top one, two, and three coping skills. So Tara and Jane, if there are three things either of you can think of, would you mind sharing? Um, yeah, so I think one of the first things that I would say would be to um, spend time with my family. I love going and seeing my family, which has been kind of difficult during COVID. But yeah. um, and the next one would definitely be music. Music always change, changes my mood. And then the last one would be to go on a walk. Or awesome. Um, well, I agree with everything you guys said. All of those help, um, especially music. Music, it really gets me motivated to do stuff and, you know, and then riding my bike and finally walking around and spending time with my family. Great. Great job, ladies. I think all of those examples are really helpful to anybody who's going to be out here watching this and getting some great tips to help keep that positive mindset going and help learn some tools that can get us through these challenging times. Well, thank you for letting us talk to you. For yes. Thank you. For Bear News Network, I'm Jane Nadra. And I'm Kara Hughes. Back, Back to you. you. Those positive segments always help but the weather sure doesn't i agree the weather has been very moody lately i can never tell if it's gonna rain or not wait a minute i just realized that there's a new segment coming on to our broadcast and i'm pretty sure it's going to help really well tell me what is it the new segment joining our media broadcast is the weather yay i'm so excited well here is Carson DePello with the weather. Hi, this is Carson DePello with the weather. Let's take a look outside. Look 
it's good. Back to you. Now that we know what's going on with the weather, we need to figure out what's going on at McKee. Oh, there's lots of things going on. Really? Like what? There's the... No, that got canceled. Oh, yeah, there's the front... No, that was postponed. We have an upcoming... No, that was called off. Oh, next week. Uh, is there anything going on? I don't think so. Okay. Well, do we at least have a two-minute mystery? I uh, don't know. It's a mystery. So that's a yes? Yes. Here's two-minute mysteries with Cielo Solorio. Welcome back to Two Minute Mysteries, where we give you a mystery and you solve it. I'm Cielo Solorio, and this week we have Francible Freeman reading a scary yet fun story for you to solve. All right, everybody, it's your principal, Mrs. Freeman again, and I'm back with another two-minute mystery. Remember, I was reading from this the last time. Last time we talked about the case of the bumped head, and today we're going to be reading The Case of the Lost City. And remember, this is a genre of mysteries. So mysteries, you have to think about what's happening in the story, use your brain, and put the pieces together to figure out, hmm, what it really happened. All right, so here we go. Let's see if you listen. I'm really into something big this time, said Bertie Tilford, the irrepressible Englishman with a more than get rich green schemes than anybody had ever heard of before. He fished a letter from his pocket and pressed it to Dr. H. Run your eyes on this old boy. The letter addressed to Bertie was signed by Baron Stram. Dr. H read, am positive I have located the lost city of Heliopolis, which was buried by the eruption of Mount Vitrus in 147 AD. Can you rush me $30,000 to begin excavations? Baron Stram, explained Bertie, came to see me before departing on his search for Heliopolis last year. He said if he ever found the city, he let me in on the ground floor, so to speak. A half share of everything if I backed him with money. Bertie grinned smugly. Can you imagine a discovery like Heliopolis would be worth? Of course, said Dr. H. Would you like to raise some of that $30,000 from me? A pittance, my dear chap, a mere bagatelle, said Bertie. I'm doing you a favor. Let me have $10,000 and I will make you a fortune. I don't know anything about your barren stram, said Dr. H, or the lost city of Heliopolis. But the man who wrote that letter is obviously not an architect or an archaeologist. Send no money for your swindler, my boy. Now, why would Dr. H say that this is a scam? Did you remember the clues? I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about that. Hmm. Let's see if you were right. Here's the answer. A bona fide archaeologist would never have written in 147 AD. AD means... Anno Domini, Domini, in the year of the Lord. And unlike BC, which always precedes the date as AD 147, not 147 AD. Ah, just a little tweak there. I hope you enjoyed that two minute mystery, the case of the lost city. Don't get scammed, everybody. Have a good week and keep reading. Did you solve a mystery? Let's hope so. See you next time for Two Minute Mysteries. I'm Cielo Solorio. Back to you. Dag nabbit. I struggled to figure that out. Luckily, our next segment is a mystery, but a review.
What is the review about? It's a gaming review, remember? Oh yeah, here's Joshua Wilkes and Justin Cole with our gaming review. Welcome back, Bears, to another amazing segment. Last time we met, we reviewed Madden 20. Good game, but not perfect. Josh gave it a 9 out of 10, and I gave it an 8 out of 10. Minor improvements would make this one a great game. This week, we will be reviewing the game Among Us. Awesome! This is one of the top-rated games in the App Store. They won the Golden Joystick Award for Breakout Game of the Year. They also won the Game Awards for 2020 for the best multiplayer and mobile game. I think you guys will agree. Everyone is playing. This game is a mobile app that you can also play on computer or tablet. You are a crew member on a spaceship and has been overtaken by aliens posing as crew members. Your mission is to rid the ship of the aliens without accidentally getting rid of the actual crew members. But watch out. The aliens are trying to rid the ship of you also. Talk about the meetings. You need to talk about strategy as well. So without further ado, here we go. Josh, what do you think about the game Among Us? I would give Among Us a rating of 9 out of 10 because it is a fun game and the graphics are good. I wish that they could add more maps so you don't just have to play the same three the whole time. Yeah, I agree with you, Josh. Just three maps is pretty boring. I also can't wait for the new map to come out. Well, those are our ratings. See you next time. Bye! That is it for this broadcast. For Bear News Network, I'm Joshua Wilkes. And I'm Natalie Garibaldi. Happy New Year! Hopefully it won't be like the last.